when you start to be like confident with your skill, you can do something that is gain that gives value now and that is sustainable in the future. Welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit of Purpose. My name is Chris Kiefer, and I am here today with Julian Mote from No Code. Well, from France, right? Uh, but you're a no code uh, consultant, an Airtable and Make expert. Um, and when I, I stumbled across your stuff from a couple different places, but um, I've been connected with you on LinkedIn for a while and I was super excited for this conversation. So thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. Hello, Chris. Uh, thank you for having me. And why don't, uh, so it's not the American slandering of your name. Go ahead and what is the correct French pronunci pronunciation of your name? Julien Motet. Okay, Julien Mote. That's that's my attempt. Um, but it's uh great to meet you. So Airtable and Make. Um where when I always like to ask people when they discovered these tools, because I am like I've had thoughts of like, man, if I would have known about this ten years ago, that would have been so like I'm I'm probably in the last two to three years that I've been really going deep on Airtable and Make. Um and I love it. And we are in particular for our company, we work specifically with painting contractors. So really niche. And we've got all these systems and processes that we can do around just painting companies, but the, uh, the skills apply to anything. It's just like you have a process and we can, we can streamline, eliminate and all that stuff. But when did you first come across these tools and how long have you been leveraging them? Um, I think I discovered them in 2000 and 2018. Actually, I was doing a um, full stack boot camp in Paris uh, in a school called Le Wagon. And um, so I was learning how to, to code. But at the same time, they were showing us tools like Zapier and Airtable to, because it was a good way to to initiate us to API and to databases. And so I discovered them. At the beginning, I was saying, oh yes, it's a nice uh, Excel sheet. Because yeah, when you look at Airtable for the first time, it's, uh, it, it looks like Excel, but uh, nicer. So it was the first time I, I discovered them. And uh, at that time, I was not a consultant. I was working like for, for, for uh, like uh, an association. And um, I started to use um, Airtable and Notion to build a CRM, just a, a, a CRM. And at some, but I was not working on digital stuff. I was more in the sustainability uh, the, uh, field. I was uh, working with companies regarding like sustainability. And at some, at some point, my association um, closed. So. I started to think, wait, why, what could I do uh, for, for a living? So I tried to help companies regarding sustainability. Unfortunately, they, they, couldn't, they didn't want to pay for that. But they had some issue regarding IT systems. And I said, hey, you know, I, I know some tools that might help. So I started to, to help one of my uh, potent, uh, one company regarding uh, these, these issues with Vertable and Make. And, uh, it was great, and I learned. Um, then I learned make, and uh, I started to talk about that on LinkedIn. And some some other company contacted me to to because they had some other issue, and that's it. Uh, it was 2020, and I started my uh, my consulting uh, my consulting uh, activity like that. Just yeah, because I I was gonna say uh, your your perception of Airtable is similar to mine. I remember it was sometime around 2019 where I first stumbled across Airtable or someone told me about it. And I literally remember thinking I went to it, I logged in, it had like the free trial. And I was like, this looks exactly like Google Sheets, but it costs money. This is stupid. And I just <laughs> left. I was like, I was done. I was like, I can do, I'm, I loved Google Sheets. I had so many things built in Google Sheets and I was just, I totally missed it. I didn't understand the relational database aspect or anything else that is so powerful with, with Airtable. Um, but anyways, I, I remember the same exact thing of just like, Oh, this is just Google sheets. Like, why would I pay for this? It's Google sheets is free, but the relational databases is 
you, I can't, I've told so many people that are Excel nerds and fans of Excel, you have no idea what you're missing if you don't understand relational databases and how limiting it is to build out systems in, in Airtable. And then the second big thing I would say is the ability to, um, uh, restrict or, uh, access to fields that you want to show, because we talk to companies all the time that literally have like a dozen Google sheets and you ask them like, why do you have these four? And they're like, Oh, just because we don't want them to see this price or this information in this sheet. So they have someone whose job is to like copy it and paste it into this other thing. And now it's completely out of sync, you know? Um, so anyways, that, those are my two big, uh, things that I tell everybody is, Imagine being able to have a Google sheet, but you could choose to only show like five columns to this person and 20 columns to that person. And they can only view these cells and edit those ones. Like that's what you get with Airtable plus the relational database aspect and then layer in automations and a bunch of other stuff. It just keeps getting better. But um, I want to dive into the topic of uh, focusing on like a quick, immediate ROI. That was something that you said you're pretty passionate about. Um, how do you, like when someone comes to you with a question or an issue, how do you frame this for them to like set expectations of how long of a process this is going to be and and like orient the project to to get to an ROI quickly? I So I asked them many, two questions. Um, what takes you a lot of time during your day? What is the task that takes you a little bit more, a little more time? And during the past uh, month, what has been the, um, the biggest issue? Like when you think about the, your last month, what has been the, the, the biggest issue re regarding to data? Like uh, someone uh, needed the data and didn't get it, or that data was a mistake and uh, uh, it had a big consequence uh, regarding to the, the company. I, I focus on really issues, you know, because because sometimes people arrive and say, "Yeah, Julian, I want uh, I want this, 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 or I want a big CRM doing that, that, that." But um, the thing is, uh, the, for me, it's really hard to price this type of like big project because you don't really know, no nobody knows exactly what uh, they need. So mm. I prefer to focus on their their issue big issues and try to fix them first it's uh, it's a way for me to start to dig into the data into their excel sheet their 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 tools and to look uh, what is going on and so i can bring value to the company uh, start to know them a bit and uh, at some point once we we got one or two small success, we can start to say, okay, uh, I know your company well, I may, okay, maybe you need a bigger system for that part. I know uh, how long it would take because I know the quality of your data. I know your process. I know the maturity of the people inside your company regarding to IT. This is something really important. I know your company. So now we can, we can work and we can create something big. But first I, I start, I tend to start to to build really small stuff. So of course, regarding to money, it's small project, but for me, uh, I prefer doing small project and get a uh, satisfied client than starting something big and uh, don't, and sometimes you don't really know where you, where, where you go. So I prefer to go small with small steps to be sure mm. that uh, people are happy and I know what I am, what I am doing. Yeah. Um, and you said something there that I want to come back to. You said you want to understand the maturity, like the technological or the IT maturity of the people in the business. Tell me more about that. The thing is, what is interesting with like my clients, most of them comes from Excel, um, especially like the, the people who are working, because I make a difference between the managers and the people who are working on the, the Excel sheets. And what is great with Airtable is that it looks like Excel sheets. So when you transfer people, uh, it's not a big deal for them. And because, you know, when you, I mean, 
making people change the of system it's 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 hard it's it's a uh, uh, it's not uh, funny to change the way you used to work so um i like airtable because people feel confident you say okay you you were you used to do that for the past 5 years i just take your like your rows i put it in in airtable and you can keep on working the way you used to do so it's a first step I think it's really important to put them in the new ecosystem. And then if it's needed, we can start to think about maybe uh, adding interface, but it's a, it's a next step. So um, when I say that, it's like for low maturity people, it's a great, Airtable is a great tool because you can just copy paste like the data from Excel sheets to Airtable and they can keep on working without noticing that it's a new tool almost. For more mature people, you can start directly with the interface and stuff and automations. But, you know, the, I would say building something is one step in a project, but transferring the people, like the, 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 the this is also a big step and Airtable with this, uh, this, this uh, table that looks like sheets is a big asset for me, you know, especially for low maturity people. Yeah, yeah. What is the, so when, like I would, we call it like implementing. So we build the thing and now we have to implement, which means in my definition of the word, actually getting it used in the business, right? Yeah. And depending upon how many people there are, and like you're saying, training them and making sure they understand how to use it, but also how to improve it or adjust it or tweak it when they need to moving forward. What's your like, do you have any recommendations on people that are new to Airtable that like, how do I get better at it? If I am, if I've never used it before, what's the best way to learn it and utilize it? Usually when I, uh, when I help a company, I try to find someone inside the company that is going to be next to me most of the time though. So I can, I can give him some of my knowledge and he's going to be that the, the referee in the company regarding to Airtable stuff. Usually, sometimes it's not even someone from the IT. I am looking for someone that, I don't know, like building stuff, building website, someone like is, that is resourceful, that wants to like, likes, like building stuff. And so sometimes it's from the quality department, sometimes it's the HR department, uh, but I prefer someone from like the real like uh, operational department than from the IT because I want someone that is really close to the, the real needs uh, that understand really like the, the field. And so um, I, I, I would say that the best way to, to, to get more skills is to get a coach. And so first at the beginning, the coach is building. And so you look at what the coach is doing and little by little you can do like uh, one table and you can add fields and then some formulas and then you get more and more, you do more and more and the coach is just watching you. And it's funny because sometimes I do consulting, I'm just like uh, cooking and uh, I look at what my, my uh, client is doing and I just comment what is going on and I don't do anything anymore. So I would say uh, it's a good way. The best way, the fastest way is to get a coach for sure. Because um, especially regarding like how to create a database, uh, um, if you have no skills in uh, database architecture, if you ju just come from Excel and you have no IT skills, it's really hard to, to understand what, how to, to create a sustainable uh, database, for example. Yeah, I like that. I think that the... Um, uh... I do think the having someone that can like walk alongside you and be like, okay, I'm going to try and build this thing and I'm stuck. I need help with this little, little piece is, is good. And I also would say, uh, the, I don't know if you agree with this, but my advice to people is like, don't be afraid to break something. Like you're not, you're not going in trying to break stuff. But for me, the times that I learned the most was when I deleted a property that I didn't think I needed and I ignored the warnings. And then all of a sudden, like I go look in the interface and something's missing or it's broken. It's like, oh, like the way I operate is like, 
obviously it depends on the scale of the company and how critical the systems are, right? But if when you're using tools, I strongly encourage people to be like, just move stuff around, like link things and change and just see what happens. And then uh, to within reason, right? You're not like, and like I said, you're not trying to go just destroy what you made. But I feel like sometimes I talk to people and they're afraid to do anything because they're like, if I click this and it, and then my whole thing's ruined. And I would say, and if it is ruined, then you'll learn and you'll figure out what you did wrong. And I don't know, that's my opinion. And what, what is great with Airtable is it that you can recover all your data really easily. So even if you destroy everything, uh, you get the, like you have like a seven days uh, history. history. If you deleted something, you can restore it directly. And uh, so- Good afternoon. It, oh, Whoops, good. my Siri just started talking to me all of a sudden. <laughs> So, and this is what is great also with Vertable is that it, even if you destroy something, you restore it in a few minutes. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, tr try stuff. Sometimes you, you're you going to make mistakes uh, along the way, and it's the best way to, to learn. Um, but as you said, I, I, I would recommend, like, try to build something and get someone more advanced in Vertable to criticize what you have done and you get, you will get a lot of feedbacks really fast and you will get also like guidelines that you should do that. You, could go, you should go on that side and be careful on that in the future. And for sure. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's a great point that it's like, don't just hire a coach and say, what do I do? But you have to put in some work and then say, how did I do? What would you do differently? that's a much more productive use of the coach's time because you're putting in that it's like practicing the piano, right? If I, if I said, Hey, I want you to teach me piano and I'm like, all right, tell me what to do. And it's like, well, first thing is go practice a lot and do the chords or whatever. And then I come back and I play for you and you're like, Oh, you should try it. You know, it's just obviously that work in between the coaching is huge. One thing that I'm curious your opinion on is, uh, the, how do you balance um, like the speed to ROI? So trying to get ROI quickly, but also um, I have seen many people that, and you actually had a really funny meme on your LinkedIn page. And I was going to pull this up and show this to everybody really quick. This, uh, this is just spot on. If you've ever seen this, this is Excel users creating their first Airtable base. Absolutely hilarious. So when I saw this, I was like, this is perfect. Um, and I feel like obviously this is a wall that is probably not very structurally sound. And eventually you can't hire a different, like more experienced bricklayer to fix this. They would just say, okay, we have to demolish it and then rebuild. Yes. Right. <laughs> so there's the balance of like, in my experience, let's say it's not, this is clearly like really poor, just shoddy craftsmanship, but let's say that what you made actually did make sense for the problem that you were solving, even you, your experience. So you're not going to make like, you're not going to design a wall like this, but you might design a wall that actually is in the wrong place and the room's too small and we need to make the room bigger because we now have more information or whatever, right? Or maybe there's a doorway that there should have been there, right? So in my experience, one of the big pitfalls that people run into when it comes to um, air table, but also just make automations or automating processes in general is that they just jump in and they try to solve. They're just like looking for wins. Right. But then at a certain point you get to a place where you're like, this is a horrible foundation. It wasn't architected well. And now, you know, I should have done things differently. So how do you balance? Cause I do completely, I, it's like, I agree with both perspectives. And I think that the, the quick ROI and getting people into the tools and there's value there. But when people are working on their own, like if I'm by myself not working with a consultant, would you still recommend that versus I would say making a blueprint or a plan of like, what are we trying to do and how is this process going to affect that part of the business? And you know what I'm saying? Um, yes, I, I see what you mean. The thing is, um, usually when I start to think about the architecture, the architecture, sorry, architecture, I start to ask questions not about now but about the future. Mm. 
the type of question that they could uh, ask them first, that they could ask, ask themselves. For example, one of my clients was uh, selling like two kinds of products. I said, okay, do you plan to sell, to, to sell more than two type of products in the, in the next five to 10 years? Because the, um, the way you structure the database is going to be completely different. If you have just two type of product, you can just create like a, a, a four field, like quantity, product one, price, product one, and that's it. And it is going to work that way. On the other hand, if the number of the product is going to change, you need another a new table and you need the, the, to put the product in that table. So I try to, with my experience, I try to, to ask questions about the future that can uh, help me design the best architecture for, for the future. And of course, if you don't have the, the experience, and sometimes you don't even think about this question because you don't see the impact, the potential impact of that question on your architecture. So if you don't have, like you need a consultant with experience to really create the first part of your base if you want to, to be sure that in the future it's going to work. Yeah. Otherwise, it's as you said, it's going to be hard to, to get something right. Like... When you start to be like confident with your skill, you can do something that is gain that gives value now and that is sustainable in the future. But it's not it's not easy. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. No, I would say the biggest thing I think as as you're talking, I'm trying to settle on. I think what I would tell people is, if you are going to go out on your own and just do it, there the benefits to that is that you're going to learn quickly. You'll make mistakes. And it might end up costing you more time in like the long run. Like it could take you six months to get to an end state that a consultant could get you to in two weeks. Right. But you will develop knowledge in that process if you go solo. So it's like acknowledge that, yes, that is a path, but I would say that my recommendation would be to find somebody that is knowledgeable, that knows what they're doing, because I think people always undervalue their own time thinking like, oh, it's going to cost how much for a consultant? I'll just do it myself. And then they end up taking 10 times as long to do it themselves. And it turns out that the price of that consultant was actually a far better deal if they actually valued their time and what they should have. Not to mention it took them you know, way too long in the business to try and solve this. And they could have been working on better pro opportunities and problems for themselves, and, et cetera. But anyways, I just, I do completely agree that yeah, I just wanted to add something. You know, in my meme, I, I made fun of Excel users, but they are like really completely different type of Excel users. Mm. Like expert Excel users, I met some of them or, which, which are like and really, really good at Excel and doing great, great stuff. But, uh, and then I think if they do it on their own, they're going to be really good, really fast at Excel. But some type of person I think even after six months, they wouldn't get the, they wouldn't understand how, how things are built. And uh, so really it depends on the people. I, 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 usually you can feel quite fast if that person is going to be able to learn the stuff you need to learn to create good Airtable base or in some other people who doesn't. It's not yeah, clicking. Yeah, they don't have the thing for, 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 for data and stuff. And they will never get the the the, the skills. I would say, um, you can feel it usually. No, I completely agree with that. I would say the um, I I have wondered, and I'm, I don't know if you know of anything. Is there like a competency test that you've seen online, or like tasks that you could give someone to kind of test their knowledge to see like can they handle this? Because a lot of times the owner of the company. We'll say, hey, we want to hire you guys. And we will say, great, who's the tech person in your business that we can work with? Because you need somebody. We're not going to be with you forever. We're just going to help you build this thing. So who's that person? And they're like, oh, Jan can do it. And it's like, okay, Jan, what's your experience? And it's like, she's never done that and not interested in it and not capable. So I've I've always dreamed of having a tool that's like, you want Jan to do it, have her take this test. And if she gets above an 80%, 
then that's good. And if it's not, then you probably need to find somebody else. I, I did like a, a post a few months ago about that. I would say like, I, I would ha I have like a kind of a checklist. Like for me, someone who has already like created a website for just for him, just for fun with something. Like when you do like the first meeting and you start to talk about the, the tool and what you are going to do, if you see someone that asks question and has like a really sparkling in his eyes and get exa exciting, this is the type of person I want to 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 work with, mm. you know. And I don't care wh where where it comes from, like motivation, like resourceful. I think it's enough. If you get one meeting a week at the beginning and that and then one meeting a month after a while with that person, the, the person is, is going to 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 get the skills i'm sure so motivation and a little bit of like resource yeah um talk to me about make so we've been talking a lot about Airtable. um what is the power of make or the i guess i would say one question i always like asking automation people is what's the craziest thing you've ever automated with make or other automation tools and or the most like impressive and i always distinguish between Sometimes the most valuable automations are really quite boring because they automate a mundane task that happens a bunch and saves a bunch of time. But there are automations that I think are really impressive, but the value of them like isn't necessarily justified in the cost to make all of them, but it's still just like really fun to be like, whoa, did you know you could do this? And now a quick word from our sponsor, which is Boolean Review. Boolean is a review software that my wife and I own, and we sell this software to home service businesses. So I know there are many different people that listen to this podcast, but if you know someone, an electrician, an HVAC business, a painting company, maybe a coffee stand, someone that is providing service to customers and get found online by customers, we would love to talk to them. This is a review software that is the highest converting review software in the home service space in particular. And if you're wondering what that means, if you have a hundred clients in your business, the typical business gets between one to 2% of those customers. So for every hundred, they would get one person or two people to leave them a review on Google. Other review softwares get between three and 5%. And the Boolean review software gets 20% of your customers to leave you Google reviews. And these are fantastic Google reviews with lots of words, keywords that are going to help with SEO, pictures, stories, the names of your employees. So if you want to learn more, check out BooleanReview.com. And now back to the episode. Um, first of all, I, w I would say that what I like about Make is that it's, it's nice. Uh, with all the color and for example at uh, every year at, uh, at during christmas christmas time i create like a christmas tree with all the the balls of uh, of make so i take like uh, red uh, modules for the for the bowl and i take green modules for the, the, the trees and i have fun like that i, I mean i want to, to say that because uh, i like the flexibility of the tool and uh, all this bubble it's interesting um, regarding my um, automation and scenarios, um, so you mean the most complex or the most crazy things I've done? Yeah, just like stuff that's like it's almost like a party trick. Like, did you know that you oh, could yeah, do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. There, is, there is something. There is something quite uh, funny. Yeah. Um, um, so I was like one of the first make partners. At that time, you just needed to say, okay, can I be a partner? And say, yes, okay. Uh, they added me on, the, on their page. And someone called me from a, a French island called the Guadeloupe. It's next to the, the US. It's not next to Cuba. And said, okay, I, I use a make. Uh, I don't have time anymore to, 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 to maintain that uh, scenario. Can you help me? And so I opened the scenario. And it was a scenario with... Um, 100 modules on one scenario like like this, like crazy. I need to scroll on that on one side, on the other side, just to have a look at all the steps. It was a, um, a scenario that was taking data from Zoho Forms and then 
the goal was to uh, generate uh, estimates, but uh, it was in the building industry. So there was like a lot of calcul uh, during the, with all the modules, taking data from different Excel sheets to see, okay, uh, I mean, yeah, to, to, to do a lot of calcul for many, many type of product. And when I saw that for the first time and I said, okay, I need to maintain that. It was hard to, yeah, I mean, when you see this for the first time, you, you don't believe it. But, um, so yeah, this, this scenario, starting from just data from a form just to create a, an estimate to calculate the size of like a wall and a number right. of uh, words and stuff like this. Yeah. This, this one, uh, I remember the first time and I, I, I keep on maintaining this, but, uh, it's not easy. That's awesome. I mean, um, so let's move into, uh, the, uh, last couple questions here. Well, actually, before we do that, we got a couple minutes. Is there anything else that's like you love talking about, you feel like is a common misunderstanding with Airtable or make, um, any other resources to check out events coming up? We have anything else on your mind that you want to make sure you say, um, I mean, the, the French, the no code French community is a really huge community and, uh, every year. We host one of the biggest event, no code event, uh, in the world in Paris in October. So it's called the no code summit. We were 2,500 last year. And, uh, I think we, we plan to be almost the same uh, this year. And, uh, so you're invited to, to, to join us if you want to meet, uh, the European and especially the French, uh, no code community. This is, uh, it's in October and, uh, yeah, there is something special about France and no code. We have like a Slack channel called no code France. We are over 30,000. So it's a lot of people and it's just the Airtable uh, channel is 3000 people. So it's really huge. It's really active. And, uh, I'm happy to be part of that, uh, of that community. That's awesome. Yeah. I did not know about the, uh, the no code summit. That sounds, uh, I'm, I'm immediately like, Ooh, I only come to that. Um, that's awesome. So, um, I appreciate you sharing that. What is your favorite book recommendation? Um, so, um, in 2009, I was like, I spent a year in the U S and I discovered one book, which is that book. Oh, the four hours work week. And that book changed my, my life actually, because it, it made me discovered like what was the digital economy you with that book, you, you discover like concept, like the concept of niche, you know, what, which was at, at the time really new, you know, and, uh, the fact that you can create, uh, a PDF and sell it everywhere in the world. And even if in your, in your, maybe in your city, no one care about your PDF, you can sell it everywhere. So the fact that, uh, the web is changing the way things are done that, uh, when you do your marketing, you can be like really on a niche and it works. Um, so yeah, the, the, this book from Tim Ferriss really, I think for someone who doesn't understand the digital economy, even if it's a, an old book, I would recommend, uh, reading that. Love it. Um, I have not read that surprisingly. I've read Tim Ferriss's to, uh, tools for Titans. And, um, yeah. anyways, I, I follow Tim Ferriss closely, but I've actually, I'm just realizing, as you said that I've never actually read his book, but I feel like I've. I know his philosophy and approach and everything, For but sure. I, I yeah. want to add that to my it's, list. Um, if, if you, if you read the the blog, his blog, it's, uh, you, you know, most of it. Yeah. Story. And what's your favorite movie or movie recommendation for us? Uh, I mean, uh, I think my favorite movie is interstellar interstellar, like, you know? Yes. Yeah. Interstellar. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say like the, regarding that the emotion you get like from that movie, uh, and the music and stuff. And it's something that st 
stay in your like in your body for for a long long time yeah like i don't know how to to think about that and the thing is yesterday i looked at the video that was checking a lot of uh, like uh, scientific data regarding uh, to the the new movie like uh, okay the black hole looks like this in the movie is it no is it uh, the, the the right uh, aspect yes it's the right aspect uh, the, the 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 vessel is turning at that speed is it okay yes it's okay and you can f see that actually 95 percent of things that are going on in that movie are realistic like th um, scientifically speaking is is it's uh it's true so it's great to see that uh to do this type of movie like the the directors uh ask i, I will i'm sure they, they ask to really scientific people to make sure that everything is as realistic as possible. yeah totally um and what is your recommendation for right reaching out to you? How do you prefer that people do that? If someone wants to pick Julian's brain or uh, hire you? I mean, I'm most of the day on LinkedIn. So I would say I would look, I mean, they can contact me on LinkedIn for sure. Awesome. I would also. And are you speaking at the no code summit? Um, we will see. I, I organized something called the no code games. So it's like, uh we there's like one tech stack for example i don't know airtable and glide and you have like four three hours to build something and uh if you have if you if you create the best app uh, you get a price you get uh 500 uh, euros that's awesome so so yeah I, I did this last year and i organized the same uh event uh this year is it all based on the same prompt what, what what do you mean the same like problem? is the when you go build this do they do they say all right you need to make an app that does this oh it, it, it actually depends uh sometimes you are free you can do whatever you want sometimes they say okay we want to we want uh this type of uh, of app so it depends on the technology uh what so last last year we got uh zoro creator we got software plus make we got glide and we got the last one, but I don't remember well, what was it. But yeah, so that's awesome. But it's really a lot of fun because we have like uh, people are coding, but uh, all the um, all the computer. Yeah, you can you can see all the computers on big screens, so you see what's going on. And for example, for Glide, it's great because the the, the app builder on, on on Glide is really nice to to watch. So people were watching this, and uh, I could comment. Uh, and uh, rock around uh, saying stupid stuff about what was going on. So it was a That's fun. awesome. I, really I love it. that. Um, sweet. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I'm glad we were able to connect. And I now have to try and convince my wife to go to Paris in October. So <laughs> uh, thank you. Is it always in Paris? Uh, that event? Uh, yes, it's in Paris. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Julian. It was great getting to meet you. And uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Chris Kiefer, and my mission is to champion the relentless pursuit of purpose. And what that means to me is to be an example, a champion, someone that is in the trenches working and showing and winning and trying and failing in how to pursue a deeper and more meaningful life with the people that I love, with my kids, with my friends, with our family, and also just be a champion and example of entrepreneurship and following my passion and doing what I believe I'm called to on this earth. And so if that inspires you in some way, please share this episode. If you want, like, subscribe, share, whatever, do all the stuff. It means the world to me to get this message and get these guests that I have out there. And if you're interested in, in any of the book recommendations or looking up other episodes of the movie list, you can visit my website, chriskiefer.com for all the details on the show. And also check out the Boolean review software, as well as the Boolean automation consulting company that I own for home service businesses. So thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next episode.